a spread of malaria. Malaria and malaria. Malaria. 2,000 cases of malaria. I've had malaria before and it was devastating. Think of flu symptoms and multiply that by like 10. We're talking fever, chills, headaches, joint pain, nausea, and so much more. I mean, a lot of people die from malaria. Now, with all that being said, why would a scientist, a doctor, choose to intentionally infect people with malaria? And why would the Nobel Prize Committee think that that was a great idea? idea to the point of awarding that doctor a Nobel Prize. Hi, I'm Jamal and welcome to SciTech. So the answer to that question and the main subject of this video is the practice of intentionally giving patients a certain illness in order to cure a more serious condition. Now, this practice has been around as long as medicine itself. From deliberate smallpox infections in the 1800s to treating lupus with tuberculosis in the 1900s. But what we're talking about today is much more recent. It is about a practice called malariotherapy. That's right, this is a therapy of curing certain diseases by giving people malaria. Now, listen, I know how bad malaria can get, so I can't even imagine how much worse a condition would be to intentionally volunteer to get malaria in order to cure it. But apparently, people have been doing this for thousands of years. Early records show that the philosopher Galen in the second century CE described a case of mental illness that ended after a cotton fever. Now, the cotton fever is what they called malaria at the time. The term malaria didn't exist yet. Even Hippocrates, the father of medicine himself, described how some infections reduced the symptoms of madness. He also noted that the quartan fever, which is pretty much malaria, could stop epileptic convulsions. This was around 350 BCE. So notice that malaria at the time was called the quartan fever. And this is relevant because physicians who came after hypothesized that it was the fever from these infections that was affected in treating these neurological conditions. And this led to the birth of a branch of medicine called pyrotherapy. Pyrotherapy involves increasing the body temperature, i.e. inducing a fever, to cure different diseases. Now, increasing the temperature of a person can be done by various methods. We can use the injection of a parasite, a foreign protein, or even a chemical such as sulfur. But in our case, the scientists were injecting patients with plasmodium, which is a parasite responsible for causing malaria. Some notable attempts at this method include a Russian psychiatrist named Alexander Samoilovich. He was one of the first to experiment with injections for the treatment of psychosis. He claimed to have used malaria and typhoid fevers to cure several mental conditions. Now, he claimed that he had a success rate of 50%, which was actually pretty good at the time because this was in the 1870s. There were really no other effective methods to cure these conditions. In 1887, Dr. Julius Wagner Huareg started exploring pyrotherapy. He published his first paper titled The Effect of Feverish Disease on Psychosis. Dr. Wagner's work focused on a severe type of psychosis causes called neurosyphilis. Now, common syphilis, if left untreated, can attack the central nervous system, and this is what leads to neurosyphilis. This is a very serious condition. It involves severe physical and mental impairments. We're talking seizures, dementia, mania, and psychosis, and this can lead to death as well. So this is many
many times worse than malaria. Dr. Wagner started using malaria to cure neural syphilis. The idea is that once the syphilis was cured, they could then start treating malaria. At that time, there were no antibiotics to cure syphilis, but there were several medicinal compounds to cure malaria. A common compound at the time was quinine. Quinine is a known malaria cure that some people still use even today. Dr. Wagner tried this approach and it worked. After experimenting with other methods to induce fever, he concluded that malaria was the most efficient way. In 1917, he reported successful results from his study. Other physicians later began using this method to cure neurosyphilis and other neurological conditions. They started using different techniques to induce fever and to improve the timing of treatments in order to get better results. This practice continued until the 1950s. But with the introduction of penicillin and other antibiotics, physicians stopped inoculating patients with malaria. Thank God, we could now cure syphilis easily using antibiotics way before it gets to neural syphilis. Dr. Wagner eventually received the Nobel Prize in 1927, just only 10 years after his results, which is unheard of. Now, it is worth noting that he willingly infected people with malaria without their consent and that is definitely not okay it's not cool but his research ended up saving many lives wait it says here that dr wagner was a nazi and he supported eugenics come on dr wagner come on i am very disappointed but listen, despite all the controversies and ethics violations, Dr. Wagner and other physicians and scientists at the time laid the groundwork for the life-saving therapies that we benefit from today. Pyrotherapy and malaria therapy are just a few examples of what we now call stress therapy. And this is a method that we still use in various forms today. But we don't use fever to treat illnesses anymore. And we haven't really found evidence that fever would be effective anyway. So this is a crazy story about a crazy scientist, but now you understand why some people would allow a doctor to infect them with malaria. Thank you for watching and tell me what you think in the comments. And please consider subscribing because we have many more science videos coming.